I do want to share the story of our index case. A 67-year-old married man presented to me on my first day of practicing sleep medicine on September 11, 1982, and he had the very beautifully worded chief complaint of, quote, violent moving nightmares, which indeed he had. The most consequential episode that prompted clinical referral to our sleep center involved a dream in which he was playing American football. He was a running back carrying the ball across the line of scrimmage, and he ran smack into a 280-pound defensive tackle who smashed him to the ground. My patient then awakened, and he was startled to find himself not on the football field, but rather on the other side of the bedroom from his bed after having run into a dresser. He had gashed his forehead and was bleeding. He then saw his physician, who found no medical basis to this nocturnal problem, and then a psychiatrist evaluated him and found no psychiatric basis for this unusual behavior during sleep. He was finally referred to our sleep center, the Minnesota Regional Sleep Disorder Center, and uh, five nights after I interviewed this pleasant man, he was studied in our sleep lab, and he was documented to have the loss of the customary muscle paralysis of REM sleep with prominent limb jerking and a range of complex behaviors during REM sleep, often associated with dreaming. His sleep EEG showed no epileptiform activity. And that was a key differential diagnosis because sleep-related epilepsy can present with a variety of unusual behaviors, including violent behaviors. So for treatment, I initially prescribed a tricyclic antidepressant to hopefully achieve REM sleep suppression and thereby reduce RBD episodes. And that was great logic, which did not work. He could not tolerate the anticholinergic side effects of the tricyclic antidepressant. So I then prescribed clonazepam, since he also had periodic limb movements throughout sleep. At that time, that was called nocturnal myoclonus in the neurology literature. And in that same neurology literature, nocturnal myoclonus was effectively treated with clonazepam. And lo and behold, immediately he responded to 0.5 milligrams of bedtime in terms of controlling his RBD episodes as verified by his wife. He also had no more dream enactment episodes. So it appears that clonazepam not only controls the abnormal behaviors of RBD, but also the abnormal dreams of RBD, which has prompted a lot of interesting research on the dream generator for RBD episodes besides the behavior generator for RBD episodes. So what was fascinating was that the clonazepam suppressed the overactive, aggressive, and violent RBD dreams, and not just the RBD behaviors. This clonazepam benefit was maintained nightly for over a decade until his death from prostate cancer. So there was no tolerance effect. This is typical for virtually all RBD patients. The immediate first night benefit is sustained over decades of treatment. You will now see the 1990 video, Rapid Eye Movement Sleep Behavior Disorder, that I put together after several years of identifying and then following a number of our initial patients. These men are acting out their dreams in the sleep lab during REM sleep. While dreaming that he was being attacked and fighting to save his life. Suppose you are a physician and a patient reports that he has tied himself by a rope to the bedpost every night for eight years to keep him from leaping out of bed and becoming injured during violent nightmares. And what if other patients mention that they usually retire at night to a sleeping bag or to a padded water bed in order to protect themselves and bed partners from their wild dream enacting behaviors? What explanations come to mind to account for such bizarre nocturnal events? As it turns out, there is a medical cause and a simple and safe medical treatment for this type of striking, dangerous sleep problem. Since 1982, for the past five years, during the course of routine clinical practice as physicians, we have evaluated 30 patients afflicted with the rapid eye movement sleep behavior disorder. This condition has received official recognition by the Association of Sleep Disorder Centers. These 30 patients, usually very calm and pleasant middle-aged or older men without psychiatric disorder, presented for help on account of violent dream enacting behaviors during sleep, which resulted in numerous injuries to themselves and their spouses for up to 20 years before their sleep problem was understood and proper treatment initiated. Their injuries included bone fractures, lacerations requiring stitches, and deep bruises.
Now, I want to make some comments concerning the second video on restless leg syndrome. You can see that these are severe cases. And you can see that RLS can be incompatible with falling asleep. In fact, for severe cases, I call it restless sleepwalking or non-sleepwalking because these patients are really not asleep or very drowsy, but because of that irresistible urge to move the limbs, they cannot lie in bed and fall asleep and sustain any measure of sleep. But I think you can now realize when someone talks about, I can't go to sleep, my legs are restless, they jump around, they're painful. The pain component is a very important part of RLS for many patients, not just the irresistible urge to move the legs, but the fact that there's pain in the legs, pain in the feet. And only moving around can alleviate the distress, the physical distress. Rubbing your legs, just moving, walking, standing in place, what you're seeing in the video, it can be a very terrible, distressing condition. It's really actually painful to watch these people. What happens to them with the severe restless leg syndrome, it is not a trivial problem. I know a lot of people over the years have made jokes about restless leg syndrome. And in fact, there's an official name now to deal with the jokes about RLS is called the willis Eckbond syndrome because these are the initial physicians who identified RLS, but it's still called mainly RLS, not the willis Eckbond syndrome. So the key point is that RBD behaviors are often aggressive and violent. RBD typically involves dream and acting behaviors with a full range of behaviors being displayed. Loss of remetonia and objective finding from polysonography is required to diagnose RBD.